So hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're actually gonna go ahead and start painting some small paintings together. In this lesson, we're going to take all of those techniques we learned over the past few days for watercolor and we're gonna learn how to apply them to make these pictures here. For this lesson, you will need your watercolors and watercolor brush, your water, your round or circular palette, a piece of paper towel, and three pieces of watercolor paper. You can find this watercolor paper in your kit. It looks like this, and you'll know it's watercolor paper because it has a really extreme texture to it. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera or not, but you can definitely see it in person and you can feel it. Watercolor paper is different than the paper we've been using, drawing paper, because it's gonna absorb the water a lot faster and a lot better. It's gonna lay flatter and um, the color is going to be much more vibrant on top. In your kit, I've given you many pieces of watercolor paper, but we need to make sure that we conserve our paper. We're just gonna use three pieces. So go ahead and take out three pieces and then please take the rest. I think you should have at least three more. Take the rest and put it aside and just straight up forget about it because we're gonna use that for the next part of our watercolor unit. We wanna really stick with those three pieces. So I'm gonna say, if you mess up, just try and make it work rather than just grabbing another piece of paper, because again, we're gonna need that for later. All right, so go ahead and pause this video and set yourself up, and then we can continue together. All right, so before we start painting, I really wanna take a minute to just observe our paintings that we're gonna create and sort of talk about the techniques that are involved in each one. As you know, if I pull over our pages from the last couple lessons, as you know, we have so many new painting techniques that we can use. I wanna make sure we're using the same language that we have in our last lessons for this. So our first painting that we're going to work on is going to be this one here. And I like to think of this one as sort of like a river landscape, maybe inspired by our local Hudson River. Now, as you can see, it's kind of a bright, sunny summer day. We have this beautiful, maybe mountain hill area with lots of different colors. Do you see those clouds there, right? And then we've got some texture in our river. So what techniques were used to make this painting? Well, if we take a look, there's definitely a nice wash all through the background, right? To create that blue sky. It looks like blotting was used whoops, to get those clouds. And then this was let dry. And then we're going to use both wet on dry to create the mound itself, but also wet on wet to get that kind of mottled colors there. And last but not least, you're gonna see some wet on dry down here with the texture of the river. Now I do have additional examples here, <laughs> a few more examples that we've created over the years. Of, you can see these techniques and they're just slightly different, just to give you an idea of where we're going. All right, so that's the first painting. The second painting is this beautiful night sky or galaxy night sky. So what techniques were used here? First and foremost, we have this beautiful wet on wet with purple, blue, and a little bit of red. Then that is let dry. And then we have wet on dry where the background is nice and dry and we use black paint to come in here for a silhouette. Again, I have some additional examples, right? You can see that we're going to learn how to do trees, but I do want to open it up to you. If you would like to do something like this, where it's more like of a city landscape, that's fine as well. And we can use some color pencil to grab in some stars. All right, so our last painting is this beautiful mountain scene. In this painting, we're going to be working in washes that increase in value. And for every single wash, we're gonna make sure that we're doing the wet on dry technique. So we'll do one wash over the whole paper, let it dry, do another wash, partly down, and again and again and again, increasing the paint, the amount of paint in our wash. And again, I have a few more examples up here. I'm gonna be using blue, but if you wanted to switch it up and do a different color, you can. And if you wanna change the amount of mountain ranges you see, you can as well. 
All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna push this aside. And to get started, again, set yourself up and then you're gonna pull over just one of these pieces of paper. Now we just went through all three, but we're gonna do these um, actually all at the same time, um, switching between papers to let them dry. We're not just gonna work one at a time, but to start, we're going to start with this one here. So I'm gonna keep that handy and close by and we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to go ahead and write your name and period on the back of your paper and turn that over. I know you might be home right now, but if you're in person or in the classroom, you're gonna make sure to get that name on there in case it gets mixed up with someone else's. Then you are going to grab your paintbrush and you're gonna go right over to your water and activate that paintbrush by moving it around, right? You wanna make sure you hydrate all of those bristles. And then we are going to want to activate our color over here in our watercolor palette. Now, like I said earlier, we're gonna start with a wash. We're gonna do the whole background first, actually the whole piece of paper in a nice blue wash. That's gonna count for the sky and the river. So like you know, for blotting, we're gonna create these clouds with the technique of blotting you're gonna need a piece of paper towel handy. So before you start, make sure you have that because once it dries, you can't do anything about it. So stop, go grab some paper towel. I have some here. Pull over your palette. I'm gonna move this a little bit out of range in case I drip on it. And we're gonna create a nice light blue wash, maybe about a level value level of three. So I'm gonna go from the water over to my blue, I'm gonna activate my blue, move it around, choose one of my wells, dip into that well, and add a few sort of brushfuls. And then I'm gonna go over to my water, whoops, let's pull it over, grab some extra water and sort of fill this up. Now you will need a lot, you can almost fill up that whole well, this might take a few seconds. But if that color is getting too light for you, grab some more of that blue. All right, so now that you have your wash ready to go, I'm gonna pull this back up for you, more into frame. Now we're going to quickly paint the entire piece of paper blue and then we're going to blot up the clouds but only in the top do you see i know this paper is a little bit smaller but do you see it's only about halfway down or are we going to blot in those clouds if you get your clouds down here in your river it won't make much sense will it so just make sure that you only blot the top you want to watch for a second before you paint that would be smart i'm going to make mine a little bit darker and i am oh that's nice I am going to paint the whole paper, the whole thing, because the water at the bottom is also blue. Whole thing, and I wanna go pretty quickly. Remember, if my watercolor paint dries, I can just add more water. So if it does dry on you, just add some more water to that section for the blotting. You want this color to be relatively dark so that the clouds will stand out. Try and be as even as you can. So if you see any pooling, you're gonna wanna move that around. And you will notice your paper will start to curl. It will flatten out eventually, so don't worry about that. And then you're gonna crinkle up your paper towel and you are gently but firmly gonna blot up some of these clouds. Now, do you see how I manipulate that paper? I'm gonna push and get a general shape and then I'm gonna try and grab some other sections of the paper to sort of manipulate that shape a little bit. Push and then sort of sponge around. You can add as many clouds as you want, but again, only at the top, just like the hint of a cloud. All right, that's layer one. And now we need to let this dry. <laughs> so make sure you have plenty of space around you to push this off to the side. Before I do that, I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna dry it off and sort of move around some of that water so it dries a little bit more evenly. Yeah. 
And I'm gonna take this and put this all the way over here so it can dry. And that might take several minutes. If you've got any color on your table, just go ahead and sponge that up. And we're ready to grab our next piece of paper. Now we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna go ahead and get our names on this and period, flip that over. And for our next painting, we are going to be working in our distant mountains. Now for this painting, you can see there's layer after layer after layer of these distant mountains that get darker and darker and darker. We're gonna need to create a really light wash all the way in the back and then add more and more pigment to it as we go. Now I'm gonna use blue because I already have blue right here, uh, but if you wanted to use a different color, here's a purple one like I showed you earlier, or any of these other colors, go for it. Really, it really doesn't matter. Be happy and enjoy. I might caution you against yellow. It's hard to get a really dark color for yellow and it does need to be darker when it gets to the bottom. That being said, you do need at least one, two, three, four layers of value. So don't get too dark too fast. The more layers you have, the kind of the cooler it is, right? All right, so to start this painting, you can see in purple or in blue, any color, we need a really, really, really light wash. So I'm gonna take this blue wash I have here already and I might add some more water to it to lighten it up or even like start a new one over here to make it really, really, really light. You just wanna sort of tint this paper. That might be a little too light. So again, I'm grabbing water. You see, I didn't go to my watercolors up there or not. Grabbing more and more. Making that light wash and I can even test it out and if it's feeling a little bit too light, I can add a little bit more pigment if I want. But I do wanna cover that entire piece of paper. You might be thinking, well, this is only gonna be seen up top. But we're actually gonna build on top of that over and over again. So make sure you fill up that entire piece of paper. And you guessed right, if you guessed, we're gonna have to let this one dry. So I'm gonna take this piece of paper and I'm gonna bring it over here to dry for a bit. Clean up my space. And I'm gonna pull over my last piece and we will start our other painting. And this painting actually is vertical. So I'm gonna turn my paper vertically or in portrait mode. If we take a look at this one more time, we are going to use the wet on wet technique to go ahead and grab different colors to make that beautiful night sky. And then we're gonna let that dry overnight. And then we're gonna come in and we're going to do this wet on dry to create our silhouette. And I'm gonna show you how to do trees like this, but if you wanted to change up your silhouette, do something more unique, you're more than welcome to. All right, so what makes this night sky really cool and special? Well, it's the combination of color. We wanna make sure that we get really, really intense dark color, like this purple and blue, but it's kind of nice to have a little bit of that red, because I don't know if you know this yet, but red and blue, that's how you make purple, right? So it can kind of like interact. Now, if I pull these over again for you to see, it's really nice. They're all sort of different. It's up to you to decide how you want this to look. But either which way, we're gonna start out with a really, really dark color. So we can even push our palette off to the side and pull our water into frame and really just work from our watercolors themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate, my blue's already activated. I'm gonna activate my purple over here and I want intense color. So I'm gonna come right in with that purple and we're using the wet on wet technique. So while this purple is wet, I'm gonna dip into my blue and allow them to touch and then they're gonna move. Okay, so make sure that everything is saturated and wet before you allow those colors to touch. 
I'm gonna add some more purple. I'm just kind of going all over. And I might need to add a couple layers of this color, let it dry and come back into it. And that's okay, we'll build that into our lives together. Now don't forget about the opportunity to use some of that red. I'm gonna activate that red and pull it down in here. Ooh, so nice. I really like that little bit. It's kind of nice down by the horizon line where maybe the sun is still like peeking out just a little bit, maybe over here, I don't know. And you do wanna fill up the entire paper. I'm gonna allow this to kind of come down, move that water around. You can see I'm having a hard time getting it to be really, really, really dark. And I sort of avoided the edge up top. I'm gonna to go back into it, Oof, up here, straight from the watercolor to the paper. allowing those pigments to mix. Now clearly that's not dark enough, right? So we're gonna have to continue to add that pigment, like I said, and you can try it here right now. If I go back into that blue and, and sort of dab that th more thick application of paint, or you can allow this to dry, it's up to you. I'm probably gonna do a combination of both and I would encourage you to do that as well. What's really nice about watercolor is that you can, like, you see I'm going from the water straight to here. I, there's some parts of this I don't like. Do you see that right there? That's like a weird hard edge. So I can just go into the water and come here and just like move it around. Be careful, you don't wanna overwork it. Um, you can always go back into it more later. So like, don't stress out and try and make it perfect right now. You're not going to be able to. Just enjoy and, and watch it move around and that sort of thing. You can really start to see that texture that's coming out of that paper now. The texture is very typical of watercolor paper and it's really quite nice. I think this paper that we were using in when I made these examples was not textured the same way. Um, so these look a little bit smoother. I, I really enjoy that, it's really nice. All right, so this one was a little messy, as you can see, and I'm actually gonna let this sit here for just a minute. I feel like if I move it right now, it might slide around too much, but I am gonna like visually check on my other paintings. They're off screen right now. Maybe I'll pull this one over. This one is the first one with the clouds, and you can see it's still a little bit damp. Whoa, still a little bit damp, so I might let this go for a few more minutes before I work on it. Let's pull over this one. This one too, you can see it, it's a little bit damp. So I'm gonna have to wait. And that's what watercolor sometimes is all about. And that's why it's nice. You can really slow down and relax. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes and allow these to dry. The next piece we're gonna work on is gonna be this one again. Okay, just to give you a heads up. So feel free to go ahead and pause this video and let yours dry. I'm gonna cut this and come back when this is dry and keep going. All right, so it's been about five minutes or so, and as you can see, this really has dried up really well. Still a little damp here, but it's dry enough now I can sort of move it off to the side. It's still damp, but we're not gonna work on this one anymore today. We're gonna save that for our next lesson. Instead, I'm gonna pull over my other two paintings, and we're gonna work on this one down here. I changed my mind. So this one, please make sure you identify which is which. If you take a look, they're very, very similar. This one over here, where it's just one straight color, is going to be the base for our mountains. That's what we're gonna work on next. This one here with our clouds, that is gonna be our river. 
So we're gonna save this again for our next lesson to add the green mountain and the river texture. And instead we are going to, let me pull this one back over. We're gonna keep working on this guy here because we have it all set up, ready to go. And then we'll be done for today and we'll pick it up next time. So like I said earlier, we are going to add washes of color coming down our paper to make the illusion of mountains sort of fading off into the distance. The key to this is to make each wash slightly darker than the next one and have a goal of where you're going to, where our goal is gonna be as dark as that pigment can go. So I'm gonna keep using blue. If you chose a different color, go ahead and keep using that same color. Don't switch it up. If I pull over the purple one again, you can see that same process, increasing amounts of pigment as we come down the paper. So I actually can probably use this wash I have over here. Maybe I'll add a little bit more blue. So this is basically dry. It's a little tiny bit damp, but it's pretty good to go. It's curling a little. I'm gonna let that flatten out over time. And I'm gonna reactivate my blue over here. It's been sitting for a little bit. And I'm gonna come back over and grab some more pigment. and add some more water. I'd rather have too much than too little, to be honest. All right, so now that I think I have a color that's darker than this one, but not super, super dark, we're gonna do that next level, right? So you do want it to be noticeably darker. I'm gonna test it out, but I'm gonna test it out down here because if it's too dark, I can add more water right away. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna give it a little test. That looks nice, I like that. And I'm going to come up to the top and the first thing I'm gonna do is to establish the ridge line here. We're doing mountains and mountains can be smooth or jagged, but each level we're gonna make a little bit different. Do you see how these are very similar here in this example? We wanna do something kind of like this. So each level is gonna be slightly different than the next. So I'm going to come up pretty high leaving some sky there and I'm going to come across and just draw a nice little mountain line. Don't take it too seriously. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to fill it up. Now it's feeling a little bit light to me. I might add some more pigment to that wash and try it. That's a little bit better. Try and darken that up. I do want a noticeable difference. So I'm kind of glad that I did that a little bit too light so you can see how I'm going to handle this to make it a little bit darker in case you have that same problem. But make sure you carry this all the way down, all the way down your paper. If you stop like this, when you add your next layer, you're gonna see that. So make sure you go all the way down that paper. Now remember the key to a wash is being really even with your tone. So I'm trying to make sure that all my tones are pooling in different areas or I'm not being too dry. I saw in some of your technique pages that we were a little like brush strokey. You don't wanna see any brush strokes. You just want it to be a nice even color. All right. So that is where we're gonna stop for today. So let me pull these over so you can see where we're at. I have one range of mountains. I have my sky and water really, and some clouds. And over here, I have my first layer, let me pull this over, my first layer of pigment for my night sky. All right, so that's where we're gonna stop. I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and take a picture of your whole space, just like really bring your iPad or your phone up high. Take a picture of where you're at and you're gonna submit that to me. Um, and in our next lesson, we'll keep going. Go ahead and clean up and I will see you next time.